Grace and peace to you from God our Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, church. It's a great day in the kingdom. Glad you're here. We do the Pauline greeting, so if you're a guest with us today, we don't do visitors. Visitors are of whom and with whom you're okay with, but guests, you praise God, they're in your midst. Will you say amen? And so we do the Pauline greeting, and the Pauline greeting is simply this. It is peace be with you, and the response is... Let's greet each other in Christ's name. Please stand as we read the call of worship together. All righty. Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. This is love. That we love God. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. God is the best to experience in love today, so we can embody it for others as we go forth from here. Please remain standing. Again, in your bulletin, you'll see the prayer requests. They're updated pretty, pretty regularly. Um, please keep these folks in your prayers throughout the day and throughout, throughout your weeks. And if you have prayer requests, please don't hesitate to um, give them to us. There's a little card in the back of the pew. You can fill out a prayer request and put it in the white box out in the narthex and, um, or hand it to one of us. We'll be glad to uh, extend the prayers for the, for the staff or for the entire congregation as you desire. Will you go to God in prayer with me, please? Holy and gracious God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for this beautiful place to gather and worship, to be with friends, and to be renewed in our spirits. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, so when we leave this place, we can carry your love out into the world. Lord, we pray for those who've requested prayers for themselves or their loved ones. And we pray for your healing touch, for your comfort, for your peace, Lord, for those who are struggling. And we lift the caregivers to you too, Lord, that they would be strengthened and encouraged as well. 
Lord, we thank you that we have opportunities to support people in our church and in our community and throughout the world with your love, that we have the gift of prayer that we can always offer. And may we do so freely, Lord, trusting that you hear every prayer, that you care and have compassion for every person. And it's a way for us to communicate our love for you, Lord, as well. Lord, forgive us for the times we fail you and um, fall short of the mark. And thank you for your love and mercy that continues to, to continues to hold us, to continues to carry us, and helps us remember that your love never fails. We love you and we pray these things in the name of your precious son, Jesus Christ, as we share the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And <coughs> as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And as you take a moment to prepare your tithes and offerings, I invite the ushers to come forward. And I remind you that it's through your generous giving that we can uh, accomplish all the missions and ministries of this church in our community and throughout the world. Will you go to God in prayer with me once again? Holy and gracious God, we do thank you. We thank you for the blessings that we see, the blessings that we don't even realize, Lord, that you pour into our lives every day. And as we return a small portion of those uh, financial blessings back to the kingdom, we just pray that they would meet the needs of those who are struggling this day. May they know that you are their God and that you love them. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen.
you please stand for today's scripture reading? Today's scripture reading is from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. We invite you to read along with us. From the New Testament. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. And those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live, whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Calvin left this scripture verse. Mom and dad, so after church, I'll put it right here. We had a wonderful new member breakfast this morning. We do that quarterly. And Officer Hodges, who's now been promoted to detective with the Sheriff's Department, shared some information, and I was a little bit shocked. Uh, But his uncle and I served together in an anti-terrorist unit in Norfolk, Virginia, from 92 to 94 and so a couple of questions and then going around the table finding out who's in education who's a petroleum engineer where people are at schools what schools they do who plays bass uh, who lived in Colorado and then moved here to help their kids out these are all fascinating narratives to me they really are you're pretty fascinating people But in all of the things that were shared, I heard wonderful things about people. And that is such a reward and a blessing as a pastor to get to to witness that and hear a little bit about people's narratives. I don't have much of a chance to, to learn the narratives. And so to get to sit down and hear about where somebody lived, why they're here, how they got here, what they do for a living, where they've been is is something fascinating. I just want to let all those know that attended and Trudy did a great job putting that on that uh, it was a blessing today to get to know you just a little bit and so I praise God for that let's pray Heavenly Father in spite of the nature of the presenter we pray that your will is done in the words that are spoken this day and we ask that the Holy Spirit guide those words in spite of who presents them and we ask these things in Jesus name and all God's church said Mabel was a small town busybody and there was a house that served certain illegal 
illegal liquids and it was notorious in this town and Mabel could tell you about anybody and everyone and what they did or didn't do, who they were, who they weren't. All you had to do was ask Mabel, she knew. And Mabel would fixate on people one at a time and find out what they were doing and where they were doing it, who they were doing it with. And all of those factors came in that fascinated Mabel and therefore it became her life. Mabel focused on Danny one day and Danny drove to the wrong part of town we'll say and he pulled up to a house that was peeling paint and had a dim red light on the side of the front window and she knew what was served in that house illegal liquor of course finally she couldn't contain herself anymore and as Danny began to walk up the sidewalk she said I know who you are and I know what you're doing he turned around he said hi Mabel she said you're going in there that's Satan's liquid that you're about to consume in there I know what they do he turns and he stops says Mabel have you ever had it she said of course not I would never have such a thing unless it were served to me in a clear wick liquid in a teacup Danny walked in, shut the front door, walked up to a makeshift plywood bar. He said, I need three shots of your yellow moonshine. And then I need one shot of gin in a teacup. Immediately the bartender looked at him and he said, Mabel's outside, isn't she? We are busy bodies, and that may not be a bad thing. We are bodies who are very busy. And for those of you so-called retirees, if that's what rest looks like, I don't know if I want to go there. You're coming from here to go there to see this person, to take care of that person, to be with this person, to come here, to volunteer, to do that, to be here. It's nonstop. You're busier now when you're retired, it seems, than when you were working. My wife asked me the other day, she said, when are you going to retire? And I said, 11 years from now. She said, didn't you say that three years ago? And I said, I did. And she goes, what are you going to say next year? And I said, 11 years from now. I don't know that I want to retire. You guys are busier than I am. And I love the fact that you get to take trips and do what you do. It's good that we're busy. It's good that we keep busy. And it's good we keep busy growing the kingdom of God. Because when we don't, well, therein lies a problem. There used to be a show with a character called Tim the Toolman Taylor. And there was a show he did. He worked for a company called Manford Tools or something like that. And they were supposed to have these tools work. They never worked right. And he had this sidekick named Al, and he always verbally abused Al. It was horrible. The tool wouldn't work. It wouldn't cut, or it wouldn't, the project wouldn't work, and you just knew it was coming. But at the end of every episode, there was always a scene with a neighbor. And that neighbor, we never saw any but his eyes and nose behind a fence. And Tim didn't really have to tell him the circumstance. He would just ask him specifically at what the advice was he had to give because Tim knew it was coming. The man was watching the whole time. And sometimes it would be better if we had more to do and less to judge. We live in a society of echo chambers. If you're a CNN person, you watch CNN. If you're a Fox person, you watch Fox. If you're Michael Medved, you listen to Michael Medved. And you and I don't get any differing opinion other than an echo chamber of our own reasoning. It's the first time that's ever happened in this country. Do you realize that? It's been going on for the last eight and a half years. They've done a survey about it. And we don't grow in who we are. And we bounce the same idea off as a ricocheting bullet of reason. And that may be okay for some, but Paul says, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know what the liberal conservative debate was in Paul's day? Should you eat all vegetables? 
What about you people that eat meat? You had the liberals and they ate all vegetables. You had the conservatives and they ate meat and some vegetables. And that was a big, big deal in the churches. And Paul says, why don't you both hush because you both could be right and you both could be wrong. Why don't you both just hush and nobody has to win. Why don't we remember and celebrate that we're all children of God through Christ our Savior. And one side is not necessarily evil and one side is not necessarily good. Have your opinions, it's okay. Be who you are, that's okay. But don't be destructive in how you're worried about who and how someone else is. I don't think that's bad advice. Because in 2 Corinthians 5.10, it's interesting to see Paul's second letter to the church at Corinth. What Paul says, and Paul wants to equalize the playing field. What he says is, wherever you were on this earth... You will stand before God in the day of judgment. Regardless of who your radio station was or your news source was or your political affiliation was or whoever you were, to think that someone else will stand in the day of more judgment is a dangerous place to be. We're watching what they do and we're judging how they are and we're behind the fence ready to give all the advice. There are tolerances that I think we need to have as Christians, and there are other times we can dig our heels in. That's our choice, but as long as we're not destructive and we're still growing the kingdom, both can be applicable. Will you say amen? I say that to you today because Paul wants us to know. Can we pull up 2 Corinthians 5.10? Thank you. Read this with me. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so they each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. I'm not a postmodernist. I personally do believe there's good, and I believe there's evil, and I believe we are in a battle against evil all the time. The war has been won but evil is a soldier on an island that doesn't know the war is over and still needling you and me, trying to push us away from the love of God in Christ our Savior. And we have to be aware of that because sometimes us being involved has to do with pushing ourselves away in what we say and how we say it, how we judge, how we don't. I sat at the football game the other night Nice people all around me. Everybody in Alito thinks they're busier than any other town. Have you noticed that? We're real busy. And I like, it, it, this, in Alito, football's real big. We live in Texas. Come on. Christy and I bought a house for my last principal, and he was also the superintendent of schools. Wonderful man. And the first thing he said to Christy was, I paddled your husband about 50 times if I paddled him once. And all I could say was, I deserved every bit of it. And I said, Jerry, I'm going to ask you a question. That was 40 years ago plus. We didn't have science books, but we had bike helmets that were $380 back then in 1979. We had the air pump bike helmets with the little blue adjustable air pad, if you all remember those helmets. And, uh, but we didn't have science books. And he said, well, son, all that's true. Red Oak ISD made a decision. We'd rather you keep enough brain in your head to learn later versus having a science book. See how priorities can get just a little out of whack. My science class was a coach that just made stuff up. And as long as you made it up with him, you were good. He also didn't like Jimmy Carter back then. So if you didn't like Jimmy Carter too, you were good. The mom sitting in front of me, very pleasant lady, she said, So how long have you lived here? We tell her how long. 
By the way, Christy and I are in our fourth year. You've tolerated me as your pastor for four years. God bless you all. She said, I think we have some of the best, most supportive parents anywhere. And I said, yeah, we do. We also have some doozies. Homecoming. Good game for the first 17 seconds. We won 70 to nothing. I told Christy when we pulled up, I said, we'll be ahead 40 by the end of the first quarter. I was wrong. We were ahead 39 by the end of the first quarter. And the kids got to play that didn't normally get to play, and I celebrate that. I'm glad for them. You know, not everybody's the size of Ryan Pipkin. Some of us are a little bitty, and we're going to have to wait and see when Ryan goes out of the game so we can play. And I say that to you today because there's status and judgment in every aspect of society. I was talking to a Marine Corps C-130 pilot years ago, and we were talking about the hierarchy. He said, uh, by the way, let me just explain this to you. Um, The helicopter pilots, we kind of judge them. I said, really? You judge them? He goes, yeah, they're not fixed wing I don't know what that means, but it sounded good to me. He said, and then the, the next step is, you know, I guess the, the C-130 pilots, and then the fighter pilots look down on us because we're just C-130 pilots. And he said, and then, but if you, if you, fire, if you fly a C-5 Galaxy, then that, that bird's so big and mighty, you know, that's, that speaks for itself, so you can be left alone. And he said, and I said, well, who makes fun of the fighter pilots? And I said, Did, is there anyone? And he goes, us behind their backs there's a hierarchy in everything have you noticed that in everything we do and there's also a little bit of a sense of judgment we have to be very careful deciding we're right no matter what and the world is wrong because Jesus came and showed us that he was right and we were wrong And he died for that. He died to teach you and me out of love for us. Wanting to let us know he just wanted everyone to love everyone. I'm not here to blast any particular political affiliation or news channel. By the way, if media is behind your name, I don't trust you. Have you noticed this? Because if you watch a left-wing channel, you're going to get, say it with me, left-wing. If you watch a right-wing channel, you're going to get right-wing. Remember the days of Dan Rather where he could look at the camera and legitimately say, and that's how it was. Because it was just what Dan Rather said. And we have to be careful that we're not the man behind the fence looking at other people judging having all the opinion but not all the information. We have to be careful that we don't begin to refuse to associate ourselves with people that don't necessarily agree with us because Jesus wouldn't. We have to remember that we need to look at the world through the eyes of Jesus Christ, our Savior, not the team who won. Something beautiful happened the other night. I love this. The homecoming queen was also one of the directors of the band. For those of you at the game, she had on a bright red dress, beautiful little girl, and she had her gloves on, and at halftime she walked right up those stairs and directed the band as homecoming queen with a sash flying. And then to watch the band, two-thirds of the football team walked up into the stands after the game was over to support the band that supported them. And they sat and watched. Then I looked across the field. Saginaw's band, having supported a team that lost 70 to nothing. And that's because Alito just quit scoring. Stayed to support the Alito band. And when they were introduced at the end of their show said, and we wish the Alito band all the best in their future endeavors and contests. Sometimes God gives us a glimpse 
of what the world should be when we see his face. Will you say amen? The missions meeting the other night, you want to see something fun and exciting? They blow the doors off when they get together. If you thought we weren't involved in high-speed mission maneuver, get ready because they're at Mach 2. You can sit in that room and the discussion is succinct. And by the way, they're an official committee of the church now. I thought about this last year. We're going into the year and we've already done 14 mission trips. And I say we, you have church. 14 mission trips in a year. I think you may get it. A lot better than your pastor even. And I'm very proud of that. I'm proud of us doing that because when we go on mission, we don't say, where does this town lean? Is the mayor a Democrat or is he a Republican? By the way, these people in this house, who are they? We just show up and try and be the hands and feet of Christ. It's good that we're busy bodies. It's good that we're bodies that are busy because we need to be building the kingdom of God. You help build the kingdom of God by coming to worship today, and you thought you were just coming to worship, but someone in your life is influenced by you coming to worship, and you don't even know who it might be. But God is using you as an emissary to build the kingdom. And just when you think you're not of use to God, Scripture will remind you time and time again I wrote a newsletter article and I said the Bible says over 300 times it commands us to rejoice. Do you know why it commands us to rejoice? Because each and every one of us belong to Almighty God and we're created by Him. And whatever we encounter in this life, we're called to rejoice. And the only thing that you and I have to win is for the kingdom of God. I had a lady years ago in a church, and she always wanted to pump me for information. And I want to go on record that there's no one in this church that has ever done that to me, and I mean this. Kent, you've been there. You'll have somebody come up, and they'll go, you know, so-and-so's a good friend of mine, so you know uh, about their problem, right? Well, what they want you to ask is, what is their problem? Or they insinuate something you may already know as a pastor. And just like courtrooms and district superintendent, I mean district superintendent, excuse me. Could be them too, but district attorneys don't like pastors because we get amnesia when we get to court. Were you there at 3 a.m. on the night of so-and-so and so-and-so was thrown in the back of the car? I don't recall. You don't recall? No. You don't recall being at this place at 3 a.m. in the morning? I think it slipped my mind. Well, a lot slips your mind, doesn't it, Pastor? You can always say, yeah, ask anybody. They'll tell you. Not much there. The lady would pump me for information about every other month. She would come in and say, I'm dear friends with Fred. And you know what Fred's problem is, don't you? I don't know, does Fred have a problem? He has a red car, it's really fast. And I think it's dangerous. Don't you think it's dangerous? Don't you think that? I I don't know. I think it's a nice car. You ever been sucked in a conversation and before you know it you go, ooh, this is yucky. I don't want to talk about so and so. I don't want to be involved in that. And they're good at it. Have you noticed that? They're good at being behind the fence with just their little eyes showing. They got their heads up. Well, I'm not, and I like this, I'm not talking about them. Yeah, you are. I'm not really talking about them. I want you to know it's an equal playing field. For all of us must appear before the judgment of seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. There's no one in here above anyone else. Will you say amen? There is no one in here that's better than anyone else. And there's no one in here that is beneath anyone else either. 
I like the equal playing field. I like the fact that I can look at people every Sunday and know that Jesus loves them no matter what, and even me. Stay busy, church. You're doing good work. Stay busy. Be the good kind of busy body. And use your busy body to build God's kingdom. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said. We give the invitation every time we gather. Bells, beautiful, by the way. And every time we gather, the invitation is from Jesus Christ, not from me or this church. If you'd like to be baptized or accept Christ as your Savior, or you'd like to join with this congregation, you won't find a better group of people who were sinners just trying to get it right. Church, I just got to tell you, I cannot tell you how proud I am to be the pastor of everything you're doing and everything you are. It is a blessing to be here, and I don't want to fail to say that. It is a blessing and a privilege to get to be the pastor here. So I want to remind you before the benediction, no matter where you falter, no matter where you fail this week, you better hear me. Nothing can separate you from the fact that you turned to Almighty God and worshipped Him before the week even began. Nothing can take that away from your story. And remember that you're loved unconditionally by God Almighty who created you. If so, will you say amen? amen. Pastor Kent, will you give us the benediction? Let us pray. Oh God, we're thankful that you are a God who looks down upon us and teaches us every day to see everyone on an equal plane. You teach us to wrap our arms around the least and the last and the lost. You teach us to walk in places where we are challenged, where there are people who are hurting. Teach us how to do that, even now as we pray responsibly in this way. Repeat after me, all that I am, all that I am. and all that I, have, all that I have, I give to Christ, I give to Christ. And, to his service. and to his service. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed week, church.